All right, guys, we've gotten through uh, parts one and two of using trigonometry with our definitions of sine, cosine, and tangent. We've also used those definitions in SOHCAHTOA to uh, set up trig equations to help us solve for a missing side length. Now, that's not the only thing that we w might want to uh, find that might be missing from a triangle. We also might want to solve for a missing angle measure. Okay, and uh, we're going to do something first that has very little to do with trigonometry, but more uh, about math sense and how we can use formulas in multiple different ways. So, um, the area formula for a circle, remember that would be area equals pi r squared. Traditionally, the first time we learn a formula like this, it's because we're looking for the area. We call it the area formula. Usually, uh, we'd be looking for the area. So if I told you the radius of the circle, could you solve for the area? Of course we could. If the radius was 5, we'd plug in a 5 right here. 5 squared is 25. 25 pi, if we were looking for an answer in terms of pi. No big deal. How else might we be asked to use this formula? And this is something that we've talked about a lot in class. Every single formula can be used in more than one way. As long as I give you all but one variable in any formula, you should be able to use it in multiple different ways. So how else could we do it? Maybe if we're given the area of a circle, we want to solve for the radius. You guys have done questions like that. In fact, you guys have done a lot of questions where maybe we gave you the circumference of a circle. You use that formula to find the radius, and then use that radius to find the area. Okay. Uh, moral of the story, um, formulas can be used in different ways. You want to think of it as using it forwards versus backwards, or the quote-unquote normal way, and then maybe a different way, that's all, that's fine. How does this relate to SOHCAHTOA? Well, each one of these three, those sets of three, are SOHCAHTOA, right? Each one of these, in theory, is a formula. The, ratio, the value of sine is the opposite leg over the hypotenuse. That's a formula. Same with cosine, same with tangent. Okay, uh, if you want to think of it as the forwards way or the normal way, we taught you in part two where we're solving for a side length. Let's take a look at that. Uh, we'll just create a little right triangle here. And we'll call it maybe A, B, and C. We'll put a right angle there, and maybe we'll do uh, this side would be 8, this side would be X, and this side would be 34 degrees. In this case, just like we did in part two, we could use trigonometry to solve for this missing side length. A uh, little recap. Here's my 34 degree angle. Um, first thing we like to identify is that this is the hypotenuse. And then our 8 here would be the adjacent side from that, or the adjacent leg from the 34 degree angle. So now we choose which trig function we want to use. Adjacent and hypotenuse. So Katoa, that would be cosine. So cosine, our angle measure always goes with the trig function, equals adjacent over hypotenuse. And we could go ahead and solve for there, from there. We're not going to do that. We did that a lot in part two. Okay. Um, solving for an angle, though. All right. What if we change this just slightly? Same looking triangle. We'll go triangle A, B, C, where C is a right angle. And I'm still going to give you this leg as 8, but this leg is going to be, I don't know, the hypotenuse will be 12. And what if we were looking for the measure of that angle? How do I know we're looking for the measure of an angle? This variable is inside the triangle in one of these corners that represents this angle B here. Okay. Now, the whole point of this is that we don't need any new equation. Okay. We still have an angle. We still have the adjacent leg and we still have the hypotenuse. We've just changed which one of those we don't know and which one we're looking for. But I'm still going to work with this angle. This is still the adjacent side from that angle. This is still the hypotenuse. So I should still be using cosine. Now remember, the angle always goes with the trig function. And then we have that cosine equals adjacent over hypotenuse. We used SOHCAHTOA, same trig function, same fact that we had an angle, the adjacent leg, and then the hypotenuse to set up our trig equation. 
So in part three, when we're looking for an angle measure, those first two steps of what we did in part two, choosing the trig function based on the given information, then setting up our equation using Sokotoa, that's not going to change. What will change is the algebra needed to solve this equation versus solve that equation. Let's solve them both. If we were looking to solve for a side length, right, we'd multiply both sides by the denominator, whatever it happens to be. It happens to be x here. And then remember when that variable is in the denominator, it takes us that extra step of dividing by cosine of 34 degrees. So we're going to do that. Okay, we'll get our calculator over here. All right, let's make sure we can see it. All right, and uh, sorry, let me get this. Okay, we've got the calculator all set up where we can see. So we're going to do uh, 8 divided by trig is where we find our trig functions, cosine of 34. We're in degree mode. And our answer, 9.65. So our answer to this, x would equal 9.65. We give it a quick check. It is the hypotenuse. It should be bigger than this leg. We feel good about our answer. Now, actually simpler, less steps in the algebra needed to find this. So this x, this is the angle. We'd call this kind of the trig ratio or the value. This is the cosine value here, okay? When we are looking for angle measures. Now, this is all one thing. It wouldn't make sense to divide by the letters COS. But what you can think of in math is that to undo something, we always talk about inverse operations. So the inverse operation of addition is subtraction. In algebra, we can cancel out something added by subtracting it from both sides of an equation. The inverse operation of multiplication is division. For that reason, what we're going to do is take the inverse of both sides. We really don't need to write all of that down. All you need to know is that we're, we use inverse trig functions to find missing angles. So Cosine of x equals 8 over 12. x will equal inverse cosine of 8 over 12. Basically, the inverse cosine of both sides got rid of our cosine, if you want to think of it algebraically. Okay? And it's a different button in our calculator. So let's go back to our calculator. And we're going to hit trig. So see that cosine inverse? Anytime you're solving for an angle using trigonometry, using SOHCAHTOA, we want to use these inverses. So we're going to hit cosine inverse, 8 divided by 12. And that's what we're doing here. Okay, so we have right here, we have inverse cosine of 8 over 12. We put it right into our calculator. All right. And we hit control enter. And we get 48.19 degrees. I know that's a little tough to see there. There you go. 48.19 degrees. And that would be the measure of that missing angle. So it really only takes one step. All right. Um, example one here. These are just our, uh, again, kind of just like we did in part two, just working with the calculator. All right. So... Let's do this here. All right. How do we know this is us kind of practicing to solve for the angle measure? Well, check out where the variable is. In each one of these three, the variable is going to be attached to our trig function. Okay, so we have tangent of x equals 3.5, sine of x. So all we're going to do is do the inverse of those trig functions. So we'll do inverse tangent of 3.5. We'll do inverse sine of 0.75. We'll do inverse cosine of 0.19. Very simple. We'll do a couple of these um, with the calculator. We'll show you kind of where that comes from. All right, again, let me move this up a little bit. So we hit the trig button, and we'll do, let's do the middle one. We'll do inverse sine. Sine inverse. 0.75, control, 
enter. We get 48.6 degrees. I don't think we need to do all three of these, but interestingly enough, uh, maybe we'll get to something about that um, at the end. Let's do the couple examples. We'll do one together, and then maybe you can try one on your own. It says find the measure of angle y to the nearest degree. All right, so here's the measure of angle y. Um, this is the hypotenuse. Always nice to figure out what that is first. From angle y, which we're going to look for, 100 is the opposite leg, 41 is the adjacent leg. We choose our trig function based on SOHCAHTOA, All right, just like we did when we were solving for a side leg. The trig function that connects the opposite leg and the adjacent leg, we're going to choose tangent. So tangent of the angle, we're looking for angle Y, is equal to opposite over adjacent. That's our knowledge of SOHCAHTOA. Now, to solve for the angle, we're just going to do inverse tangent of 100 over 41. And this is as simple as plugging it into our calculator. So we've got trig, tangent inverse of 100 divided by 41, control, enter. We get 67.7 degrees. Pretty simple. Um, now, if we were looking for P, we wouldn't need to do all the trig. We would just subtract this angle and 90 from 180. All right, let's try example three. Why don't you pause it here, set up your trig equations. Um, you can start with angle X or angle H, doesn't really matter. And then you won't have to use trig to find the other one. You just subtract those two from 180. All right, I'm going to start, pause it here, and then you can check your answer with me. I'll do, I'll set up both using trigonometry. So if we're at angle X, really you can use any of these. We have the opposite, we have the adjacent, we have the hypotenuse. All right, so I'm just going to choose to use sine. We'll go sine of X equals 6 over 10. From angle X, 6 is the opposite, 10 is the hypotenuse. And to find the angle measure, we'll just use inverse sine in the calculator. For angle H, again, we can use any of them. Um, I'll try. I'll use. I'll use cosine just because it proves a point we made in a previous. Cosine of H is equal to adjacent. Here's my angle adjacent over hypotenuse. Remember, we talked about this situation that the two complementary, the two acute angles, sine of one, cosine of the other, would be the same. All right, we talked about that. So H will equal cosine inverse of 6 over 10. You wouldn't have needed to do that if you found X, subtract it from 90, you'd get H and vice versa. All right, so the sine inverse and cosine inverse. All right, so we got sine inverse of 6 over 10. Oops, I did not hit control enter. Sine inverse 6 over 10, control, enter. You get 36.87 degrees. And then cosine inverse of 6 over 10. Degrees. These actually do add up to 90. Nice way to check it for us. Okay. Uh, what I'd like you to do, if you're curious and if you want a little bit of a next level thinking, um, if you typed in sine inverse of 14 over 11 or cosine inverse of 23 over 21. What your calculator would say is that there's an error. If you'd like, think about maybe why that is, and if you're really curious, you can ask dur during office hours. 
But the moral of the story for this set of notes, when we're looking for the angle measure, we set up the trig function, we use inverse trigonometry.